Uh, all right, so take out your notes, please. Okay. And guys, listen, please. We're going to get started here. So we basically now have covered just about every single human body system. We have one left, the reproductive system. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few days. Um, and so in this section of the unit, we talk a little bit, we start by talking about male reproductive system, we talk about um, various organs of the reproductive system, then we'll move in and talk about female reproductive organs, the various parts, what they do, their purpose. Then we'll talk a little bit about how the egg gets fertilized, how the embryo grows, how the fetus develops inside of the um, uterus, and how it's born, and then we'll finish up by talking a little bit about things like how twins form and what the types of twins are. So it'll take us a few days um, to get through this area. Uh, it's okay if you have questions, as long as they're appropriate questions, as long as they're not just for you to be funny, but if there's things you generally really don't understand and you want to know about, that's fine. We only use scientific terms when we're talking about um, anatomy. So those are just sort of the rules. But it's fine to ask questions. Get questions, get lots of questions every year. The question already mm -hmm. well, let's when it comes no. to the stuff we're studying, then you ask me questions. This is the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is that? That's a guy. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about why he's there in a minute. So let's let's start by talking about the reproductive system. Is it about this? Yeah. Oh, what do you call testes? It's a like Yeah, it's the same testes. I don't know. I think usually um, in science. We use testes a lot, but in like medicine or like in health, um, they might use testicles. It means the same thing, and both are, are appropriate. Um, good question. I, I never like really have testes. Yeah, they're the same. Um, I think maybe testes is more general. Like I don't know if in other animals they call them um, testicles. It's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, so the reproductive system. Like all the systems we talked about, they all have a, a purpose, a function. And the reproductive system, its function is to produce new humans, to make um, new organisms. And so today we'll be focusing on the male reproductive system. Um, and so in the male reproductive system, the testes uh, have sort of two jobs. One we've already talked about. One we already talked about as part of another body system. Mm -hmm. Do you remember which one? What other body system did we mention the testes in? No. Endocrine. Because what do they produce? What? They produce a hormone, which is part of, a of the endocrine system. So they produce testosterone, and we study the in the endocrine system. Testosterone is the male sex hormone. But then they have another job, a reproductive job as well, to produce what? Sperm, sperm cells. So the testes produce sperm. And they're both related because testosterone affects the production of sperm. So they are related. Um, so what would you call testosterone? It is a what? Hormone. Yeah, it's a hormone. And it's an important hormone. Um, testosterone is responsible for the development of the things we call male secondary sex characteristics. Um, <coughs> as uh, males age, the levels of testosterone in their body increase over time, and it leads to changes in their body which are controlled by testosterone. Some of those things, uh, facial hair. Testosterone stimulates the growth of facial hair. It also stimulates the growth of body hair. Testosterone leads to the voice deepening. Testosterone in the blood also stimulates 
the development of muscle mass. And so that last one, the development of muscle mass, that is one of the reasons some people artificially give themselves excess testosterone. What do we usually call that? Steroids. Yeah, steroids. So when we talk about if a person is taking steroids, usually it's something like testosterone or similar to testosterone. And by artificially giving them a per themselves extra testosterone, they can develop much larger muscle mass than they would normally be able to. Okay? It's illegal to take testosterone if you don't actually need a prescription, don't need it, and have a prescription from a doctor. Uh, it's against the rules of sport organizations, you know, professional sports or the Olympics and so forth, um, as a performance enhancing drug. Um, but the problem is that one of the reasons that taking testosterone is illegal is that it has a whole series of health consequences as well. Do you guys study this in health? Yeah. Um, kind of. Because testosterone is a hormone that travels all throughout your body. It affects many different parts of your body. It doesn't only affect the testicles. It doesn't only affect the muscles. It has lots of effects. A person taking testosterone at high levels, they can have um, problems with their liver, problems with their heart. They could have men taking artificially high levels of testosterone can start to develop breasts. Their testes can start to shrink and no longer function properly. So these hormones are, they have a lot of effects on the body, and so they're not something that is, um, should be used lightly. Some people do need actual treatment. Some people have had um, low levels of testosterone in their body, and they may need to take testosterone supplements to bring it to a normal level. But going beyond that is what we would call somebody taking steroids. It leads to a bunch of negative consequences. Another thing is that testosterone affects our mood as well. It affects aggressiveness. Excess testosterone can lead to somebody being more aggressive, more angry, and so forth. That's why if you ever read documentaries or read about people taking um, steroids, they might get something called void rage, where they flip out and get really mad very easily and kind of lose control. Um, Rowan? Yeah, so one of the tests, you know, one of, uh, let's say an Olympic athlete or Major League Baseball star, they have random drug testing for those people. So every once in a while, they'll randomly choose athletes, have them give a urine sample or a blood sample, and then they test those for a whole series of different things. And testosterone would be one of the things they would test for. Now, some places that make steroids try to change the formulation of their steroids so they're no longer detectable by those blood tests. And it's a way people try to get around that, is that they can give themselves these new types of steroids that they hope won't be detected by these, these tests. Destiny? Isn't that like testosterone? Are you in your body if you do, like if you do a blood test or whatever? Test? Yeah, so right. they, in your body good question. Right, they look for elevated levels. Because they know about what like a typical male of a certain height and weight would have, and if they test and they see that it's much higher than that, then they would expect that. Good, but that's a good question. Yeah, you know, even females have testosterone in their blood, males and females. It's not made in the testes, because females don't have testes, but it's made in other parts of the body. Just like males have estrogen in their body, but it's not produced in the ovaries, it's produced in other tissues. Have you? I was walking along with the, on the sidewalk with someone like that, and we saw a steroid. Oh, really? How how do you know a steroid? Yeah, I do know. I do know. I do know. I'm just curious. I mean, I don't know. Okay. I mean, people take steroids. They could, they could inject themselves with steroids. They sometimes have um, creams that you have a, a, a cream that you put on your skin, and it, you absorb the testosterone through your skin. Um, there's various ways people get steroids into their body. Uh, Tyler, how come like some like baseball coaches they don't like let the players have like drug tests? Oh, uh, I don't know that they don't let them. Like they don't want them. They don't want them to? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, some, so there's like random testing in, in most professional sports. And I don't know, some people 
feel like um, certain people might be targeted, that they're chosen to be tested more than others. You know, there's a lot of controversy around whether people should be able to take certain performance enhancing um, drugs to improve their performance or not. It's like a, just something, and there's always athletes trying to find different ways to get around the regulations, so it's kind of all over the place. All right, so let's talk about some male reproductive organs and how and um, what they do. So for reproduction, we need the combining of material from both parents, the male and female. So in males, the reproductive cell is called the sperm cell. We call that a sex cell or a gamete. And this is a sperm cell, what one would look like. They look like a little tadpole, sort of. Um, a sperm cell has, this part is where the DNA is, in the head of the sperm. Um, they have chromosomes in them, just like the nucleus of a cell is chromosomes. Behind the head of the sperm is a little area that's kind of like the motor. And then attached to that little motor is a flagellum, a tail. And the sperm cell has all these parts because it has a journey to make. Okay? Sperm cells need to um, swim to the egg, which is actually quite a ways away for a tiny little microscopic sperm cell. So they have to travel to that egg in order to fertilize it. And so they have parts that allow them to do that. Like we said, um, sperm are produced in the testes, which um, there's two of them, left and right. This diagram only shows one. But the interesting thing is that the testes are held outside of the male body, uh, away, they're not inside. Like in a female, the ovaries are inside of the body. In males, the testes are outside of the body in the scrotum. A pouch of skin that sort of holds the testes. And there's a, a reason for that. You guys know the reason that we study it? Oh, how? Is that? Because if they get like, like if the temperature's too high, they'll have like that off. Yes. At normal body temperature, 98.6, sperm cells don't mature very well. And so the testes being held slightly outside of the body keeps them, you know, three to five degrees cooler, which is a better temperature to produce sperm cells. So they're held outside of the body in the scrotum. These, these little sperm cells, they're very, very small compared. They have a long journey to make. And so in order to allow them to swim to the egg, the male produces different fluids that are added to the sperm to allow them to sort of swim through it and also to provide them with nutrients for the energy they need to make that journey. And so that mixture of the sperm cells and these fluids that are produced in other glands, it's called semen. And the purpose of that semen is to help protect the sperm, to allow them to reach the egg, and also to provide them with energy, provide them with nutrients, because they're using energy as they make their way to the egg. actual microscope image of sperm cells looks like. You can see there's a whole bunch of them here. You can see this whitish area, that's the uh, head of the sperm, then there's a little area behind it, and then the flagellum. That's what they actually look like. All right, so let's talk about the parts and, and where they're located and what all these various parts of the male reproductive system do. Are those black things that are in the like, bubbles? Okay. No, the right things are kind of the Yeah, I don't know what those are. All right, so now, if you look at these parts, we've already covered these parts. They're not really a part of the reproductive system. What are those a part of? Excretory system. They're part of the excretory system. But they're in the same location, and there's some overlap. So we'll just talk about it. So when we look at this picture, this is a male. Um, so this tube up here, 
That's the ureter. Now, if you remember back to our excretory system notes, what is it attached to? What's up here that's not shown? Kidney. Yeah, there's kidney up here. Because the ureter's job is to take urine that the kidneys are producing and bring it into the bladder down here. So this obviously is the bladder, the urinary bladder. What does it do? What does the bladder do? Dustin? Brings urine Well, not quite. Well, like it's the Right? Yeah, it just stores the urine. So the kidneys are making urine. It gets stored up in the bladder. There's a muscle down here that sort of seals up so that the urine doesn't leak out. And it holds that urine until it's ready to be released. And when it is ready to be released, that muscle that keeps it closed opens up, it relaxes, and then the urine can flow out of the body. It goes through this long tube here called the urethra. The urethra carries urine and also carries semen out of the male's body. Outside of the body in the scrotum, out your skin. And so the sperm cells that are produced here in the testes, they travel out of the man's body. They have to make their way. They go up through this long tube that starts down in the testes, but then it goes up into the body, loops around. And then it eventually merges here with the urethra. This long tube, its name is called the vas deferens. The vas deferens. It carries the sperm to the urethra. Now, does anybody know the name of a, a type of surgery that a man could have if they no longer want to have children? They no want, longer want to be able to make a woman pregnant. That's it. Yeah, it's called a vasectomy. And it comes from this tube. The name comes from this tube. Um, a vasectomy, a doctor does an operation. They cut into the scrotum. And then they basically cut this vas deferens, this tube, and sort of seal off the ends of it. And what that means then is the male, if you produces sperm cells, as they move through the vas deferens, they can't actually get out of his body because this vas deferens is cut. And so when the male releases semen, there's no sperm cells in it, which means obviously then they can't make a woman pregnant because the sperm cells that fertilize the egg to make the woman pregnant. So a vasectomy is a permanent operation, which means basically a man would, will never be able to make a woman pregnant. So it's sort of like a permanent means of birth control. You're still a lot Yeah, so they sometimes, so sometimes a man has a vasectomy and then says, oh, she always tried to do that when I have some more kids. <laughs> they can try to reverse it, but it often is not successful. Um, and so um, the chances of it working are not great. But they can try to reverse it and sort of reconnect that to 
The other thing is that every once in a while, it's very rare, but sometimes after the vasectomy, the two ends of the tube that were sealed off can reconnect just on their own. And then a man could make a woman pregnant even though he thinks he could not. So that is sometimes happens. I mean, it's pretty rare, but it could happen. Okay. So where do, where would like all this from go? They just they're they are they are produced here, but they can't leave the body. Eventually, the testes stop producing them, and they still produce the rest of the semen in their other glands. Um, but there's just no sperm. Wait, oh, yeah. All right. So that's the vast So the vast difference carries those sperm. Now along the way, there are some glands that add fluid to make semen. To the <coughs> The sperm cells need other fluids in order to um, fertilize the egg. So one of those is this right here. This is the seminal vesicle. And that produces some fluid that helps to nourish the sperm. Then as the Vas deferens connects here with the urethra. There's another gland called the prostate gland. It does the same sort of thing. It adds fluid to nourish the sperm. Now, I guess that you've all heard of the prostate gland before. How come? That's the thing? Yeah, because prostate cancer is one of the most common forms of cancer that affects men. It's very common, especially in men as they get older. Um, my grandfather had prostate cancer, my father had prostate cancer. And so what cancer is, it's when our own body cells start to grow out of control. <laughs> cancer is really our own cells. But for some reason, they're starting to grow and reproduce, and more cells are building up, and that's what a tumor is. It's our own cells that have reproduced and made a mass. And those cells can spread to other parts of the body. They can interfere with how our body's functioning, um, and so that's why cancer can be dangerous. And so prostate cancer is very common in men, one of the most common forms. Um, and it's when cells in this gland here um, become cancerous. After a certain age, men will usually get a prostate um, check when they go to the doctor, and the doctor will feel their prostate gland because if it's enlarged, that's one of the first signs that they may have some sort of problem, that the doctor will probably send them for more testing. Um, so a prostate exam could be an early indicator that they have to be checked out. There are also um, blood tests that doctors can do that detect certain chemicals that increase in concentration when a person has um, prostate cancer, called PSA test. And if a man finds out he does have prostate cancer, he probably would go for surgery. Um, and so, or there's other treatments, radiation treatment. But when um, usually for prostate cancer, they do surgery, and they basically do surgery and try and remove part of the prostate gland that has cancer on it. They may remove all of the prostate gland. It sort of depends how advanced it is. When my grandfather had prostate cancer 20 years ago or so, a little less, 15 years ago, he, um, he had his prostate gland removed, and the doctor just did sort of regular surgery. When my dad had surgery, a few years ago, um, he actually had robotic surgery. So the other day when I showed you the Da Vinci robot that doctors can use, when my dad had surgery, the doctor used the Da Vinci robot to do the surgery. And it allows the doctor to have much better control over what he's removing or she's removing from the prostate gland. And so they can do a much better surgery using that. Because in this area, there are some important nerves the bladder is right there. So sometimes if they damage some of those nerves in that area, it could lead to a man not being able to, after the surgery, control his bladder very well. It could lead to other symptoms. So they try to really do a, a very careful surgery and preserve all of those nerves. Sometimes they can't, but they do the best that they can. And that robotic surgery helps. 
professor. Isn't like doesn't that happen like that? Or they can't like control Yeah, but it's if they that doesn't happen to everybody, it becomes more common. But if they damage nerves around that area, then that can cause it as well. So it's just another reason. Um, so you know how the doctor does a prostate exam? So the doctor has to actually feel the prostate gland itself, which is, you might say, well, it's inside the body. How do they do that? Well, right here, so do you know what this is? That's the rectum. That's the end of the large intestine. This is the rectum. This is the anus. So the doctor actually can put their finger into the rectum and feel over here, and they can feel if the prostate gland has enlarged. And uh, it's an easy way to do it because it only takes them a few seconds, and it can be a good indicator. So sort of like as women get older, they need to have regular mass um, mammogram to check for breast cancer. Something that men have to do is get a prostate and have the same sort of thing to try to catch those things as early as possible. Because usually the earlier they detect those things, the better they can be treated. All right, so um, the prostate gland, the seminal vesicle, add fluids to the sperm to produce semen. And then that semen leaves the body um, through the urethra, which travels out of the man's body through the penis. So the penis is um, for depositing semen into the female reproductive system. In order for internal fertilization to happen, semen needs to be deposited inside of the female so that those sperm cells can make their journey to the egg and eventually fertilize it. So if you think about some of the other, so in the vertebrates we studied that had internal fertilization, they have reproductive organs in order to get sperm into the female. In the organisms we study that have external fertilization, they do not usually. They just have an opening where sperm is released from their body. All right, last slide. Just to get another view here, we have the testes, or again, like Isaiah said earlier, testicles, same, same term, same parts we're talking about. The vas deferens, which comes up, loops around. The seminal vesicle, the prostate gland adds semen to the sperm. And then the urethra leaves the male body through the penis. Yeah. So, yeah. Tomorrow we will start to talk about the female reproductive system.